abuse, depression, war, trauma, pestilence, disease, gambling, addictions. These are the symptoms of the modern culture. You might have a big heart, but can you see the big picture? Why should you see the big picture? Because we as a culture are walking, are sleepwalking into dangerous territory. We live in terrible times. And if we can't see the big picture, we will not know where we are heading. Why do I call it terrible times? Why such strong words? Well, let me tell you that. I have a list. And there are solutions to this. It's not that there are no solutions. I have a solution. And you don't have to follow the solution I give. But at least knowing the problem would help you figure out a solution. And be, being critical helps you decide if the solution is the right one or not. So, coming back to why I call these times as terrible times. Of the myriad of problems that there are, let me start with something simple. Food. I remember uh, we used to have grains that were different, the vegetables that tasted different, smelled different. And now when I walk into a supermarket, any grain that I see is not a natural grain. Any vegetable that I see is not a non-modified crop. All the crops that are grown are are dominantly biologically modified. So we don't even have the original seed and we are scrambling for it. When did this happen for the last time? This happened as per legend when the flood where Noah saved all the species or Manu saved all the species from extinction. That's when this last happened. That's the time we are living in. We don't even have the natural seeds. Our farmers can't grow their crops that they used to grow indigenously for thousands of years. We don't have that anymore. That's about food. Now, coming to relationships. Men leave their loved ones, their wife and children. How, how could that even happen? What about parents? How could that happen? You know, relationships are so broken. And more or less, I see so many marriages happening just as a contract. As a contract for a, between a man and woman that they will sleep together. That's all that marriage means anymore. And how is that decided upon? It's decided through various online matrimonial websites. And what's the criteria they're looking for? Mostly money, wealth. And how do you sell yourself to another person? Or how do you want to purchase people? Humans have been reduced to commodities. There are no meaningful relationships once you start looking at money as the criteria for marriage. And something similar with parents as well. There are so many old age homes and so many children thinking that their responsibilities are done if they pay up for the old age home bills. These are very dire times. Humans as a species or any mammal as a species didn't do this in the past. Talking of another thing that's completely missing from the picture, it's sacrifice. Do you see people talking about giving up something, giving up the pleasure they have, giving up anything that they own for the greater good of humanity? There are so many NGOs. There are so many philanthropists. But you know, there's something else to it always. Some kind of tax saving scheme or something that is spoiling the whole intention. It's not sacrifice. Sacrifice is giving up what you need, what you consider intact, what, it, what you consider a part of yourself. There are various stories from legends about the true nature of sacrifice. There was a king who gave up his flesh, who gave up 
the flesh from his thigh to save a pigeon because he didn't want the hawk to eat the pigeon and he did sacrifice and in return the pigeon got to live this is the kind of sacrifice we had where do we see sacrifice anymore where do we even talk about it and now comes employment it is said that when times are terrible masters will let go of their workers and workers will get let go of their masters even if the master is unable to pay has helped the worker for many years still he will not be bound to the master and there is no concept like this today and the master lets go of the servant gives up on the servant there is a very strong relationship between a master and a servant there is nothing like that anymore it's all you pay me and i do what i am paid for that to to the minimum extent that is necessary for me to get my next payment next comes language i see kids i see many kids who are unable to talk in any language other than english that's a very scary situation because language itself is culture samskrita is culture samskriti is culture that's where we get the word samskrita from losing a language is losing your culture bait hindi bait kannada tamil whatever be your language losing it forgetting it being unable to speak it is being unable to relate yourself to your culture your forefathers all the scripts all the ancient manuscripts even if they are translated will never convey the original meaning unless somebody knows the language they cannot understand what was intended by the author and now losing the ability to speak in that language humans first lost their cognitive abilities and that's why knowledge had to be written down now they are losing their ability to follow languages and depending on translations which means their cultures itself will be lost next comes the con- consumption of products we are told we think it's normal it's a premium you get to be rich using things and throwing it away getting a new dress every month getting a new pair of shoes getting using so many myriad products from lipsticks to packaged foods all kinds of products that we consume on a daily basis um humans did not have this madness for consumption until the end of second world war many industries popped up during the world wars and they had to keep their profits up and to keep their profits up they had to sell products now they transformed their weapons manufacturing industries into product manufacturing industries and because they wanted to sell their products they put together a group of top psychologists of the day and created a new kind of influence amidst the people and that research that they did there is now called a subject which is marketing that's where marketing comes from being influenced by marketing people are mindlessly consuming too many products and this has a huge impact on the natural biodiversity and the ability of life ab- ability of planet to sustain life on earth next it comes to me that when i talk about consumption what are we consuming with we are consuming with our senses so we watch television that's also a kind of consumption you watch mobile phones you are consuming through your eyes 
that's basically consumption. When I talk about the eyes, uh, some eight to 10 years ago, there was a research which was published, which then said 70% of the people do not have 20 by 20 vision. They need some kind of equipment to help them see clearly. That's 70% of people in the world using spectacles. And this trend has only been accelerating upwards. I don't know what the numbers are now, but they are pretty scary. We have lost our ability to see clearly. Our sight has been devolving or degrading. It's not devolved. Evolving or devolving takes quite a long time, but it can be degraded and abused. We have seriously abused. People are seriously abusing their eyes using blue screens, waking up late at night, being in highly lit environments even after the sun sets. This is very dangerous for the eyes. The, if that's one part of the story, the other part is the range through which people see. Most of the time, their range is very limited, somewhere between a few centimeters to a few feet. It rarely crosses something. People rarely see objects uh, that's bigger than that's farther than 100 meters ahead of them so they're not staring into the open sky regularly they're not looking into the but mountains they're not trying to see in the dark they only think that they have to turn on lights just imagine if you were somebody who was born before lights were popular before where lights were available to the common man would you not stare in the dark to see if there's a snake and how would that impact your eyes? And compare it with you trying to grab a torchlight suddenly now. And how does that console you, but never lets your eyes adapt, never lets your eyes use their full capacity? The lenses of eyes are very flexible, and them not being flexed regularly will lead to permanent loss of vision. And it starts as just a headache, and then you have sight. It's not just sight. What can people listen? They rarely can listen if they are in an apartment, if they are in a building. They rarely can listen to the noise of the gate of their apartment. They can't. It's so close to them. It's like a couple of feet or a hundred feet away. And have they heard it? No. Why? Because of the kind of pollution that we have in cities. There is an extreme degree of noise pollution. The traffic from the roads. Incessant buzzing of vehicles. Amidst all this, what are you hearing? Not even something that's happening next door. You have siloed your senses into listening. What you think is necessary. And many times, people who are staring at their mobiles, even if something is said to them, they wouldn't have heard it. I see that regularly. People who have joined a call in a team's call wouldn't be paying any attention to what's, what the discussion is. This is a serious degradation, losing our own senses. Eyes, now ears, then the sense of smell. I can tell you an interesting anecdote here. I just tried fasting for a couple of days. And on the fourth day, I was drinking water, just water. And by the end of four days, when I was walking across the street, I could literally smell what was being cooked at the corner of the street, at the other end of the street maybe like 100 meters away. Our senses are so sharp because I was hungry, I could smell it. Even otherwise, even nowadays, when I wake up at night to catch the moonlight and step out of the house and walk through the street, the number of rodents that I see and the kind of smell there is coming from a huge drainage 
that's likely more than a kilometer away from my home. But the smell spreads at night. There's cockroaches everywhere. There are all kinds of pests. Are we not sleepwalking into dangerous times? Now the taste. All kinds of products have been marketed just to trigger the pleasure center in your brains. And once that happens, your taste sense becomes dumb and dumber and dumber. Right from MSG, which is called Ajinomoto and some others called tasting salt. So what kind of language are we using? Salt that adds taste. And what are you actually adding? MSG. Right from there to all kinds of additives, caramel, uh, color, coloring agents, preservatives, all kinds of substances are there and some of them are not even fit for, uh, are not even cleared by the agencies, by the drug administration agency. See, even if one country has cleared it, other country would not have cleared it. So where's the science on it? That we're consuming everything. And what effect does it have on our taste buds? We rarely know. Even the utensils we use leave traces of chemicals within the food. And then what happens to our taste buds? Ideally, any animal, the moment it tries to taste something, sniffs something, knows if it's poisonous for the animal or not. Otherwise, how would a cow, how would a deer know what leaf to eat, what is poisonous and what's not? Instinctively. Where's that sense in human beings? Then comes the touch. What are we touching? What are we wearing? What kind of plastics we are using in that? How many mixtures of materials are we using? And what's dangerous for us? What's not dangerous for us? We live in homes that are painted. Sometimes even with chemicals that are dangerous, people have got, people use asbestos in construction. There are so many chemicals involved, even in construction of homes. And what impact is it having? Because we keep touching all these surfaces and even soaps. Why do you have to use soaps? Was it that before the invention of soap, Nobody was clean before the invention of toothpaste. Nobody could clean their teeth. Why do you have to use it? What did they use? Do we even think of it? What kind of plastics are use, being used in pads that women use, babies use? What kind of plastics? How closely touching is it to sensitive areas? And what kind of skin cancers could it produce? This all needs a critical thought. At least know where we are going as a culture. Now, let me come to the bigger picture. What has happened to the climate? The rains, sometimes too much, sometimes too little. The droughts, so severe at times and floods at the same place the following year. How will crops grow? It's very hard. Plants cannot stand up and move just because it started raining and you can't catch an umbrella when it starts flooding. Air is polluted. There's so all kinds of smoke pollution. The water is polluted. You literally can't drink water from any pond or river directly. You have to drink from bottles. All these are abnormalities. The land is exploited so deep. All kinds of trenches have been dug. And on top of all this that was being done, we have oil extraction from shale to frack through fracking. Fracking is just fracturing the earth. We go to this extent. Even the space has so much debris that hundreds of thousands of particles, say even millions of particles, millions of pieces of junk are rotating the planet 
at hundreds of thousands of kilometers per hour. Who put all this space junk? We did. The modern civilization did. And there's talk about the second coming of Christ as Israel engages in war. There are wars happening, some cold and some active, some hot, all over. And people are mindlessly walking further and further into war because they want their ego to be satisfied, their means to be established. They want themselves to prove, to be proven as right by showing aggression, dominance. This is all that whatever means. And mindlessness for the blood of innocent. in the name of God, in the name of religion. And when I say in the name of God, what all things have sprung up in the name of religion, in the name of God, in the name of yoga, what all lifestyles have been sold, what products are created, what kind of marketing is happening. These business people, how dare they say they are doing it in the name of God. Jesus didn't come down on earth to make you rich. Neither did Krishna, nor did Rama. No yogi told you to sell a product by putting yoga on the name of the product. Yoga means connection, connection between the soul and the supreme soul. So can you sell that connection with a toothpaste? Oh, probably the paste is what bonds the soul and the super soul. Moreover, the biodiversity has been hit very hard. The ecological web is a web of intricate connections. A tiger keeps the population of hawks in check. Today, farmers find it very hard to maintain their crops because of wild hogs eating their crops at night. And why did that happen? Because there are no tigers. The blue whales, the large whales, used to bring up all the nutri nutrients from the depths and throw it up onto the surface. And that fecal matter that they throw up on the surface would be where the algae grows, the phytoplankton blooms. That phytoplankton is the base of the marine food chain. And now the numbers of whales are dismal. Rather, the, the amount of plastic by weight is more than the amount of fish by weight in the world's oceans. That's how terrible the situation is. Wolves. There are too many animals that have been hurt very badly and either have become extinct or on the verge of extinction. There are many reports. You can dive into nature reports and you will see. But rather, there's somebody else whom we have spread everywhere dogs, feral dogs, feral cats, feral rats. This is what we have gifted to nature. Feral cats alone are responsible for 320 species of birds going extinct. This is a report from 2012. I don't know the numbers now. It will be far worse, and that's for sure. Even rodents, rats do this. They climb up the trees and eat the eggs of birds. There are so many feral dogs that in India, so many children have been mauled to death by dogs. But rather we see, instead of having a vibrant ecosystem, 
we see mosquitoes and bugs everywhere. Whenever I step out in the night or in the evenings, even if it's far away from any habitation, from any settlement of people, even if I walk into the fields, into the plains, no matter where I sit, the only thing troubling me continuously is the number of mosquitoes. Did you know that with increased temperature, mosquitoes breed, breed quicker and they become more violent. They suck more blood and they breed quicker and their life cycle, lifespan, the time that they take to attain maturity, all these changes. Mosquitoes biology is intricately related to the temperature and we are heating up the planet. This will only increase. All kinds of diseases from malaria to dengue, all of them, even tick disease, all of them see an uptick with increased temperature because that's not the habitat designed for us. We are moving out of our habitat, sleepwalking into terrible times. We are living an experiment. Humans always live in small groups, small communities. But we as a global civilization with this kind of travel and instant communication, we are a global civilization. The world is connected and it has its own dangerous dangers. This is an experiment humanity has conducted upon itself for the first time since it has come up on Earth as a species. And moreover, the pharmaceutical companies are doing all kinds of experiments for profits. Moreover, we don't even have medicines now. What we have are drugs. It's like somebody who has a little high blood pressure would have, his blood pressure would have come down and he calmed down. But then when he's taken to the doctor, that fluctuation is detected and he is given a drug. And then the patient asks the doctor, for how long should he take it so that it becomes normal? The doctor will start asking him for oh, how long do you want to live? So creating dependency on substances is abuse. It's not medicine. This abuse is the norm today. So many people have to abuse themselves and are abused formally by the system to take medicines on a daily basis, so-called medicines, but they are just drugs which weigh off the symptoms and strengthen the disease, not the body. The military industrial complex. Raytheon is very happy. Grumman is very happy. NG, Raytheon are raking in billions of dollars in profits because of the war in Israel, war in Ukraine, so many wars, the military spending increasing. Well, they're doing it for their profits. They're enjoying the profits, but what are they doing? They're drinking the blood of innocent civilians. We have cannibalism. And that's normal. That's state-sanctioned cannibalism. Now, to the polishing of the terms that is common in today's culture, whatever it is called, never means what it actually is. We say something on that note. We say foreign development, investment, say FDI, foreign direct investment, for example, there's a, a person from abroad who is not an Indian. He invests a lot of money in India, but then takes 10 times more money out of India. Where did that money come from? It came from the Indian public. 
So who became F felt is seen as a representative of resources. Where did resources go to from India to abroad? And what does this eventually lead to? Inequality. What kind of inequality? Today, there are many individuals who are more powerful than, who are more wealthier than many individual countries. What kind of inequality is this? What kind of culture is this? Should you bear it? Should you tolerate it? Of course, why do people tolerate it? That's where the education system fits in. Because from the time they were kids, three years old, it's infused into their brains. Their brain was continuously throughout their life about what's right and what's wrong. From the view of the lens, that's cute. They're never taught to think critically and decide for themselves. There's no criticism. There's no thinking. There's criticism, but on the fringes. That doesn't even touch the roots. That's where criticism should actually be. Is this system correct? Is this economic model the only model we have? Could there be anything else? What did the ancients follow? How did kings manage their finances? What was the economic system under Ashoka, under the Gupta, under the Maurya? What was it? Who knows? There might be historians who know. But do they think we could bring it back? Do they even have a thought like that? What does Ram Rajya mean? The richest person should have not more than eight times the poorest person. And every time you say Jai Shri Ram, this is what should come to your mind. The richest person should own only eight times. That's the upper limit of what he can own in comparison with the poorest person. Are you working in that direction? Do you think even it's even remotely possible that society moves in this direction? Then how terrible are times? Don't you think we need to become more fit in order to survive, more thoughtful. It's always known that the fittest survive, survival of the fittest. It's always there. And how do you become fit? There's a limit to individual fitness. No matter how strong, how intelligent you are, you can never be more than a group. And in a group, with the right mindset, one plus one will become three. That's why you need a team, you need a group. That's where you can survive. And without that, there's no way out. Find your team. Or if you can't find one, you can ask me and I can help you out to find one. There's no point. If you think that you'll go for a strike, there's a protest that comes up. There are so many rebellions against the government asking the rich not to do what they're doing. These are incremental changes. When the entire system is built upon lies, no incremental change, no new ruler, no new leader, no alternative politician is capable of making this fundamental change that is required. So this system will collapse. It's, it's going to happen very soon. This culture will collapse. This is an unsustainable culture. And culture is the key to survival. There are great cultures out there. And I can help you to find them. It's dire times. So dire that we might, we might not even have another year to trust people who are talking to us online because of the intrusion of AI. There are so many deep fakes already. And a year from now, 
though most of you believe it's me who is talking to you the same voice and this same vision visibility that you see on your screen could not even have come from me so what you see and what you hear through the media through the devices will all be lost and by then if you haven't had established real connections like seeing people face to face in person then you don't have any you have no connections we are on a fast track to go there so what's the solution to all these kinds of problems let me not tell you all the problems and then leave you out there in the dark wondering if there's a solution or not that definitely is the solution is to revive the culture what kind of culture is required a culture that creates trust between people what kind of trust am i talking about if you are with me on a team we do not see ourselves as you and me but like two hands of the same person my right hand would never try to hurt my left hand or the other way around that's how we have to be and together they can accomplish great tasks either of these hands can't do much on their own that both the hands put together can do this is how trustable the members of the team should be and how do you think how do i think that i can achieve that yes it's possible it's possible with our ancient methods and that starts with the matrilineal culture a matrilineal culture is where women have very strong bonds they dominate any man who enters is at the absolute bottom in the hierarchy they rise up only when women want them to rise up or they go back to the bottom how the matrilineal culture is built how connections are made between women and how the connections can get so strong all that is another discussion and i'll continue to talk about it and meanwhile i am also going to take up a path that will purify the self again from time to time and then render me as a pure soul there are ways to do, to this there are scriptures that you could read and figure out things like that or you could directly message me as i've put in the bottom that's my link you can go to instagram and leave a message and let's connect have a great time ahead have a thoughtful time ahead thank you